Imagine if we had an elevator that could take us to space anytime we wanted. Imagine if we had batteries that could store energy for huge amounts of time and that could solve the intermittency of renewables like solar and wind. And then finally, imagine if we had a water filtration device that could filter water with one pass through. The best bit is, all of these sci-fi sounding things can become a reality. And they all rely on a material called graphene. Graphene is a super simple material. It's made entirely out of carbon. And the carbon atoms are arranged in a hexagonal lattice, which basically means that they look like a honeycomb structure. Graphene has a ton of amazing properties, but the one that interested me the most was its conductivity. So graphene has a conductivity that is about 70% higher than copper, which is what we usually use for conductive applications. So I was curious as to why graphene's conductivity is so much higher. I decided to dive deep into the material science to answer that question. In order to understand why graphene has got such amazing conductivity, we need to actually understand what conductivity is at a fundamental level. So in short, conductivity is how well energy carriers can move through a material. In our case, we're looking at electricity, and electricity is carried by electrons. The easiest way to think about this is to break it down into three material classes, insulators, semiconductors, and conductors. So with an insulator, you've got your valence band, okay? So if you look at your model of the atom, you've got your nucleus, and then you've got your first shell, second shell, whatever. The outermost shell is called the valence shell. And there's the valence shell, and then above that, there's something called the conduction band. And the conduction band is where all the magic happens. So when electrons get into this conduction band, they can move around like free electrons and actually carry their electricity to other places. So to get to that conduction band though, they need energy to be able to jump because it's a pretty, it's like a gap that they have to jump to. In insulators, the gap between that valence band and the conduction band is really big. So electrons are gonna need a lot of energy to be able to jump that gap. That's why it's really hard for insulators to conduct electricity. Like things like visible light won't do it. But if you look at a metal, on the other hand, the gap is non-existent. The valence band and the conduction band overlap. So this means that metals actually have no band gap at all. <laughs> like we don't even count their band gap. So electrons can easily flow right up into the conduction band and they can start moving free. But semiconductors can conduct electricity under certain conditions, right? So if they get enough energy to jump, then they can conduct. And they only need a small amount of energy. Sometimes they just need to be heated up a bit, whatever the circumstances, when that electron in the valence shell gets enough electricity to jump into the conduction band, it can start conducting. So graphene is actually super interesting because technically it's a semiconductor, but it's actually got a band gap of zero. So that means that the conduction band and the valence band are just touching. They're not overlapping, so it's not a metal, but there's, no, there's not a gap. So the electrons are able to move super well through that energy band. So you now know that a band structure is super closely related to the conductivity of a material. And the band structure is also super closely related to something called the brillian zone. So a brillian zone is just an illustration of how electrons can move in a crystal lattice. And graphene is in fact a crystal lattice because a crystal lattice is just a material where there's just a repeating unit going over and over and over, kind of like tiling a floor. And in graphene's case, it's going to be that hexagon shape thing that we got. <laughs> so we can use the brillian zone of graphene to describe where the electrons are allowed to move in that material. So graphene has a super interesting brillian zone. It looks like that. And as you can see, it's got these six cones in it. These cones are called Dirac cones. And at the top of them, there's a point that's called the Dirac point. And these are written as K and K prime. But basically, when electrons get near these points, they start to behave as something called massless Dirac fermions. As far as we're concerned, this basically means like the electrons act as though they have no effective mass, which means that they start moving super fast. And this enhances the conductivity. Okay, so another thing caused by the unique brilliant zone of graphene is something called the quantum tunnel effect. And this basically means that instead of conductivity increasing in one straight line, a continuous increase increases in steps. So graphene can have conductivity at one level and then it has to jump to the next amount of conductivity. 
it can't beat any conductivity on the continuum. This is also caused by something called the Barry space, which is a shift in the cyclic evolution of a particle. And in our case, that particle is an electron, and basically it means that it's going to spin in a crooked way. And this is going to result in the stair-stepping conductivity that we see in graphene. Graphene's quantum Hall effect is even more special, but basically it increases by half integer as opposed to full steps. So this makes it so that engineers can get super, super, super accurate with the conductivity value that they need for things like batteries and transistors.